My dad used to work night shifts, often getting home around 3 or 4 in the morning. His job kept him out late, so the streets were always deserted by the time he'd head back. He drove to work, but instead of parking at our block of flats, he'd leave the car at my grandparents' house, which was just down the road. Now, right near my grandparents' place, about 100 meters away, there was this small, old cemetery. As a kid, I remember walking past it a few times. One day, when the gate was left slightly ajar, curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to sneak inside. The iron gate creaked when you pushed it open, leading to a narrow path with a row of six stone Jizo statues on the left. The graves themselves were all crammed together, large and small, creating a kind of claustrophobic feeling as you walked between them. During the day, the place didn't seem so bad, but at night, different story. The area was dark and quiet, with hardly any houses nearby. It always felt like the kind of place you'd want to avoid after sunset, like the shadows themselves were watching you. One particular night after a long shift, my dad was driving back, and for some reason, he was really craving a fizzy drink. You know how it is when you've got that one thing on your mind and nothing else will do. Well, that's how he says he felt. So he stopped at a couple of vending machines near our place. They were all sold out. Frustrated, he remembered that there was a machine right next to the old hairdressers by the cemetery. It was past 3 a.m. and the streets were dead quiet. No one was around, not a soul. The only sounds were his own footsteps and the soft hum of the wind. As he got closer to the cemetery, something fell off you know that feeling when the air just seems heavier, like something's about to happen. That's how he described it later. Suddenly, he heard faint voices in the distance. He thought it was a group of people maybe having a late night drink or something. But it seemed strange. Who would be out this late? And why here of all places? He kept walking, and the voices grew louder. Laughter, clinking glasses, and muffled chatter. Like there was a whole group having a party nearby. Who in their right mind is drinking at this time of night, he thought. And then it hit him. The voices weren't coming from the street or any nearby house. They were coming from inside the cemetery. He stopped, dead, in his tracks, feeling his stomach churn with unease. The very thought felt disrespectful, like tempting fate. Why were people doing that? But determined to get his drink, he kept moving. By now, he was at the vending machine, his hand hovering over the buttons. He could still hear those eerie party sounds coming from behind him, somewhere in the cemetery. And though he was trying not to pay attention, something about the laughter he had heard had changed. It had become strange, distorted, almost hollow, like it was echoing from far away, not in a normal way. He pressed the button and with a loud clunk, a can of fizzy drink dropped out. The second it did, everything went silent. Completely silent. The sudden absence of noise was more unsettling than the laughter had been. His pulse quickened. He grabbed the can, trying not to look over his shoulder, but that awful feeling of being watched crept over him. It felt like eyes were boring into his back, urging him to turn around, but he couldn't bring himself to do it. His instincts told him something wasn't right. Something was waiting. His heart was racing now. He turned away from the vending machine and started walking back, a little faster this time. Then he heard it, soft footsteps behind him, slow and deliberate. First he thought it was his imagination, but the sound grew louder closer, like someone or something was following him. The cemetery was just to his left now, the shadowy graves barely visible under the dim streetlights. He knew he shouldn't look, but curiosity tugged at him. Against his better judgment, he glanced sideways, and that's when he saw it. A figure stood amongst the gravestones, tall, motionless, and too far away to make out clearly, but what chilled him to the bone was the way it was just staring straight at him, unmoving, with an intense gaze that seemed to pierce 
through the darkness. No one else was there, just that single figure in the middle of the cemetery. Dad's body went cold. He wanted to run, but his legs felt like lead. So he decided to get back to his car. The safety of the car seemed like heaven. He tore his eyes away, picked up his pace, and tried to act like he hadn't seen anything. But the feeling of being followed grew stronger. It was as if that figure was getting nearer, closing in on him, but without making a sound. He was nearly at his car when he dared to glance back. And this time, it was right behind him, a man, pale as death, standing by the gate, watching him with cold, emotionless eyes. Panicked, Dad bolted for the car, his breath coming in sharp gasps. As he reached for the door handle, the hairs on the back of his neck stood up. He didn't look back this time. He just jumped into his car, locked the doors, and sped off. I was so scared I nearly collapsed right there, he admitted to me later. To this day, he refuses to walk past that cemetery at night. And every time we drive by, he brings up that story, still shaken by what he saw. Or what he thought he saw. That night. He told me that he believes in the possibility that he saw a person rather than a spirit that night. And to me, that makes his experience all the more frightening. Someone alone drinking and laughing in amongst the tombstones that just stares at you. Well... That would be enough to send me running too. This happened when I was in elementary school. My family, me, my two older sisters and our parents went to visit our family grave. We live in Kanagawa, but the cemetery was in Chiba, so it was a bit of a trip. Unfortunately, on the way there, we hit a major traffic jam due to an accident on the highway. By the time we finally got to the cemetery, it was late in the afternoon and the sky was already dimming. The whole atmosphere felt a little eerie. But we'd come all that way, so we went ahead with the visit anyway. While my mum was cleaning the gravestone, I noticed something strange. From behind a large monument in the distance, I saw what looked like a person peeking out at us. I couldn't take my eyes off it, but since we were about to pray, I tried to shake it off and joined my family in lighting the incense and bowing my head. I closed my eyes and I put my hands together. But I couldn't help myself. I opened my eyes just a little to check again. I watched as my breath created a little puff of fog as I breathed out. I looked up and I saw that the figure was still there, only now it had moved closer. It was now behind a grave, three rows back from ours, watching us. It was a man. His face was expressionless, and something about his gaze made my stomach twist. I shut my eyes tight, trying to ignore him. Then, just as my parents said something like, Okay, let's wrap things up. I opened my eyes again. This time the man was directly behind our family's grave. So close, and he was staring at us intently, peeking around the gravestone from behind. I noticed that he only had one working eye, and his good eye was completely devoid of emotion just cold and blank. I was terrified. I instinctively grabbed onto my sister. As we started to leave, I felt the urge to look back, but before I could, my sister firmly told me, don't look. I listened and kept my eyes forward, though it was difficult not to turn around. That was the last I saw of that man, and I locked that memory away, not talking about it with anyone for years. Fast forward to when I was 28. My father passed away, and we buried him in that same cemetery in Chiba. It was only during that visit I learned something about the cemetery I hadn't known before. That large monument in the distance, the one I had seen the figure behind all those years ago, was actually a memorial for the Muen Shou, or Spirits Without Families. People 
who had no one left to care for their graves or come and pray for them. After all this time, I finally decided to share the story with my sisters. My eldest sister said that she hadn't noticed anything strange back then, but my second sister, she claims to have seen it all. She told me that the figure I saw didn't just walk from one spot to another, it seemed to float, vanishing and reappearing in different places without actually moving its legs. She was convinced that it was the spirit of a Muensho, one of those forgotten souls tied to that memorial in that graveyard. In retrospect, I guess it kind of makes sense. These spirits have no one left to remember them, and perhaps that's why they still linger, drawn to those who visit the cemetery. It makes me feel sad rather than frightened, but I can assure you at the time, it was terrifying. Back in the days when Japan's railway system was run by the government, there were company housing units for employees, kind of like corporate apartments. These could range from apartment-like complexes to standalone houses, depending on the location. When an employee was transferred to a distant town, far from the main office or a place close to where the family usually lived, it wasn't uncommon for them to go there alone and live in one of these housing units throughout the week. My dad was also transferred to another town as a senior assistant manager. But instead of staying in the company's standard dorms near the railway yard, he was assigned to a more upscale house about 300 meters away, located halfway up a hill. Though it was called a hill, it was really just behind the bustling downtown area, right by the main station of the town. There was a small parking lot at the base of that hill, and from there, there was about a 20 meter walk uphill to reach the front door of the house. Even though it was near the end of the Showa period in the late 80s, you could tell that the house was pretty old. I was a middle schooler at the time, and I went there with my mum to look over the place. My mum assured me that it would need some thorough cleaning work and roped me in to help her. I wasn't exactly pleased to be spending my weekend cleaning, but I did want to see where my dad would be living. We unlocked the door and went in, making several trips between the car and the house to bring in some of the belongings. The previous tenant must have cleaned the place pretty well before leaving, but the house still had a light, musty smell to it, probably due to its age. Every window had wooden frames, and we opened all of them to air the place out. We cleaned up a bit too, sweeping the tatami floors and vacuuming the rooms. At some point while cleaning, I needed to use the bathroom. The house had an old style flush toilet where the water tank was mounted high up near the ceiling and covered in a wooden box. You had to pull a chain with a handle to flush it. That kind of toilet isn't something you see anymore. Based on the design, I guess that the house must have been built around the mid 1950s. After finishing in the bathroom, I felt someone's presence nearby. I cannot remember exactly what it was, perhaps a creak on the floorboards or a shadow out of the corner of my eye. Either way, I assumed it was my mum, so I called out to her, but I got no response. Confused, I looked around and I realized that she was actually outside, sweeping away some of the fallen leaves in the garden. I didn't think much of it at the time and I just went back to cleaning. Later, at around 5pm, I heard the familiar chime from the town's fire watchtower, followed by the announcement that told kids to head home. This is standard across Japan. The sun was starting to set behind the mountains. As I stood in front of the house, I found myself thinking, this is such a peaceful town, I wonder what life would be like here if I transferred here and went to school. I decided to take a break and I headed down the street to buy a drink from the vending machine. When I returned, I found my mum sitting on the porch, seemingly startled. I thought you were cleaning inside, near the bathroom, just a minute ago. I heard noises, but then, here you are, coming walking up the street. 
It really surprised me, she said. I quickly ran back inside to check. I rushed from the bathroom to the kitchen and then the bedroom, but there was no one there. I told my mum that earlier, after leaving the bathroom, I also felt like someone was there, but I didn't see anything. My mum suggested that we make sure we locked up everything properly and got out of there before it got dark. As I closed the kitchen window, I noticed a cemetery on the hill to the north, visible from the house. I mentioned it to my mum, and she said that there was a temple up on the hill as well. We locked the house up tightly, and we went home that day. About three months after my dad started living alone in the house, making regular trips between the house, the rail yard, and his main office in another town, he started mentioning something strange. I think there's something like a ghost in that house, he said. At night, when he turned off the lights to sleep, he'd see a shadow through the paper sliding doors, Shoji. And when he'd flip the lights back on and open the doors, there'd be no one there. He'd shrug it off and try to get some sleep, but as soon as the lights went out, the shadow would reappear. If he left the lights on, someone would knock on the sliding doors. Eventually, my dad stopped eating meals at the house, opting to dine out instead. He'd only return to the house to bathe and do laundry, preferring to sleep at the rail yard's nap room. Then one night at about 8pm, we got a phone call from him. I could hear my grandma's voice behind the sliding doors, he said, though she'd been dead for years. Now I can't get the sliding doors open, I'm trapped in here. He sounded genuinely distressed. Such a strange thing to hear my dad seemed so shaken up because he was usually a very calm person. Given the bizarre nature of this situation, my mum and I grabbed the spare key and decided to go check on him. We didn't want to go unprepared, so we called a local temple, and they advised us to come over first. When we arrived at the temple, the priest performed a short ritual and gave us protective charms and Ofura, a protective talisman, to place in the house. We made the hour and a half drive to the house and opened the front door. The only light on was in my dad's bedroom. We turned on all the lights in the house and went to his room. Oddly, the sliding door opened incredibly easily from the outside, though my dad swore that it wouldn't budge from the inside. We followed the priest's instructions and placed the Ofuda in the bedroom, and I gave my dad the charm that we received. And then he left to sleep at the rail yard. My mum and I drove home and arrived after midnight. From that night on, nothing strange happened at the house again. Sometime later, while cleaning the house, my dad found some white fragments buried in the dirt. He wondered if they were old bones that had washed down from the cemetery over time. Though my dad tried to shrug it off, he admitted that the house never quite felt right after that. The National Railway Company has long been disbanded, but before my dad passed, he would often say, I didn't like that house in that town, but the workplace was amazing. I was surrounded by good people and the town itself was nice. He'd also remark, a lot of strange things happened there. Maybe it was a place where the past and the present kind of intersect, you know? About four years ago, just before the pandemic, I visited that town again with my daughter on a train trip. The area had developed so much, it looked nothing like it used to. The old company house had been demolished, leaving only an empty lot with no new house built on it. It was just barren. Time flies, and though I had hoped to see the house one last time, it's just a memory now I'll never be able to revisit. When I was about five years old, my parents and grandfather took my brother and me to visit my maternal grandmother's grave. It seems like a normal family outing, right? My older brother was off playing in a nearby park with my dad, 
Normally I would have gone along to play too, but for some reason that day I decided to stay with my mum and my grandpa. As my parents finished up the visit, they got caught chatting with an acquaintance they bumped into at the cemetery. They suddenly noticed me standing still, staring off in one direction, completely zoned out. Now, when I was a kid, I would often be caught up in my own little world, so this wasn't exactly unusual for me. But apparently, something about the way I was staring that day really unsettled them. My mum, noticing this, asked me, Why are you staring over there like that? And I answered, The boys over there are calling me to play. This was weird because my brother and my dad were playing in a park, in a completely different location. Confused, my mum asked, Do you mean your brother? And I replied, Not him. I don't know these boys. Apart from the woman they were talking to, there was absolutely no one else around us. My mum and my grandfather got a bit spooked, so they decided to grab me and leave the cemetery immediately. Now here's the eerie part. The cemetery was located on a hill by the sea. The direction I had been staring at was towards the edge of the cliff below the hill. You know, towards the drop. I felt like I was in some kind of horror movie. Later, my mum asked me more about it, when we were safely away. According to what I told her, a group of boys, all about the same age as me, at the time, were calling out to me. They weren't doing anything except standing there, waving slowly, beckoning to me, to come toward them. The next day, my dad wanted to ask me about it himself, and this is where things get even weirder. I insisted I had no idea of what he was talking about. I was adamant that I had no memory of the entire incident. Not even when my mum tried to jog my memory with what I had told her. It's like I had completely forgotten about it. It was quite surprising to us all that I couldn't remember what happened the day before because my memory was supposed to be pretty sharp for a kid my age. So the fact that I had no recollection of this strange event from just the day before really freaked my parents and my grandfather out. They all silently agreed not to bring it up again, and that's where the story ends. I wonder sometimes if something happened on that hill, by the sea, by the sea, maybe some kind of accident in a time long ago. Back when I was in high school, I used to spend every long vacation from school at my cousin's house. His place was out at his place was out in the countryside, and it was always super quiet, especially at night. We'd spend our days hanging out and our nights gaming until the early hours of the morning. It was kind of our thing to stay up late playing video games together. We'd usually stock up on snacks and drinks ahead of time, so we didn't have to go out. As I mentioned, my cousins live in a pretty rural area, so even the nearest convenience store was like a 30 minute walk away. There was nothing much around, just fields, woods, and a graveyard nearby. One night we were deep into our usual gaming session when we realized we were running low on drinks. My cousin, being the competitive guy that he is, suggested that whoever lost the next game would have to go and buy more drinks as a kind of punishment. I agreed, figuring it wouldn't be me, but of course, I lost, so I ended up being the unlucky one who had to go and get drinks in the middle of the night. I didn't even know where the vending machine was, so my cousin quickly scribbled out a hand-drawn map for me. It wasn't exactly a detailed one, just some rough directions, with the cemetery marked as a landmark. It was around 2am when I finally set out. Not exactly thrilled about walking through the countryside alone at that hour. The night was eerily quiet, and the only light came from the dim street lamps scattered here and there. I was following the map, trying to stay focused on reaching the vending machine. 
The path led me right past this old graveyard, which my cousin had marked as a major landmark. The cemetery was pretty big, with rows and rows of gravestones all casting long shadows in the moonlight. I didn't want to stare at it too much, it was pretty creepy so I just kept walking. But I wasn't able to keep my eyes off of the graveyard for long though. Before I knew it I was looking over towards the graveyard again, and that's when I noticed something weird. As I was passing the graveyard I caught sight of a figure inside. It looked like a person, standing among the gravestones, but something about it was off. At first, I thought maybe it was just my imagination, or maybe someone visiting a grave late at night, though that seemed unlikely to me. The more I looked at it, the stranger it seemed. This figure was taller than a normal person. It must have been about two meters tall, towering over the gravestones. I couldn't make out too many details from where I was standing, but the figure was dressed in all white. Its clothes seemed dirty and graying, but I could tell that they were once white. It kind of looked like a woman, but it was hard to tell in the dark, plus their hair obscured their face. My heart started pounding a little faster, and I quickly turned away, deciding it was better to just get to the vending machine and not think about it too much. I managed to follow the rubbish directions on the map that my cousin made and got to the vending machine. I bought the drinks and I started heading back the way I came. As I passed the graveyard again, I noticed that the tall figure was still there. It hadn't moved. I tried to keep walking but my curiosity got the best of me, so I stopped and I stared at it for a while, trying to make sense of what I was seeing, and that's when things got really creepy. The figure turned and looked straight at me. I couldn't see the face clearly, but I could feel it staring at me. My first thought was, oh no, I'm about to get yelled out for being out so late by someone, aren't I? But before I could react, the figure suddenly started running towards me. Not just walking, but full on sprinting in my direction. I completely froze for a second, not really sure what to do. The figure's face came into view and it was twisted into this terrifying expression. It was angry and it was moving fast. My instincts kicked in at that point and I bolted. I ran as fast as I could, my heart pounding in my chest. And I didn't stop to look behind me until I was back at my cousin's house. I was out of breath, sweating and completely freaked out. I had no idea what had just happened and to be honest I didn't want to think about it too hard. Of course my cousin laughed at me and didn't believe my story, but I didn't really care about that though. Even now, I still get the chills when I think about that night. What was that thing? Was it even human? The figure seemed too tall to be a normal person. It had long black hair that hung down past its shoulders, and as it ran towards me I remember hearing it muttering something. Maybe it was some kind of deranged person walking around the cemetery late at night. Or maybe it was just something else entirely. I'll probably never know. Sorry if this story doesn't have a huge twist or a satisfying ending, but it's one of those memories that still creeps me out to this day. It's one of those moments when you realize how quickly things can go from normal to terrifying in the blink of an eye. Just thinking about it makes me kind of shiver. When my son was about 18 months old, we had this routine every day. On the way to his daycare, we'd pass by a cemetery, always the same one, and without fail, every time we got close, he'd wave at the same grave saying, bye bye, or hello, while grinning and waving as if he saw someone, and there was never anyone else around. It wasn't like he was just mimicking me or anything because I wasn't waving or even acknowledging the cemetery. It really seemed like he saw something there, something that I couldn't see. It gave me a strange feeling every time. I mean, 
What could he have been possibly waving at? It made me wonder if young children really do see things that we don't. They have such innocent and open minds. Maybe they pick up on things adults can't anymore. My son wasn't talking much yet, but the way he interacted with that grave made it seem like he knew someone was there. In fact, I wasn't the only one who noticed weird things like this. A lot of other parents have shared similar experiences online. One woman said that her daughter would wave and say goodbye whenever they passed the same spot on their walks, which later turned out to be the location of a hidden cemetery. Another parent said their kid would sometimes point at an empty corner of the room, waving and greeting an old man, even though no one else was around. There are so many stories like that out there, kids waving at empty spaces or laughing at ceilings as if someone's playing with them. It really makes you think, are they just imagining it? Or do they know something that we don't? Some parents feel comforted, like their kids are connecting with something gentle. Others get freaked out and try to ignore it. Then of course some parents believe that their children might be interacting with something with ill intentions, a malevolent spirit. Personally, I never knew how to feel about it. I tried to brush it off, but it always stuck with me. My son eventually outgrew the habit of waving at that grave, and he doesn't remember anything about it now. But even after all this time, I still wonder, was there someone or something really there all along? I think it's kind of comforting to think that maybe our loved ones stay with us in ways we can't fully understand. And maybe, just maybe, our kids are able to see them.